Maybe three or four years? Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, that's good. We put a number on our mask so the thing can say number one. <laughs> Speaker number one. Number two. I'm just gonna, well, okay, it's 6.30. Let's call this uh, meeting of the Capital Improvement Projects uh, Committee to order. Um, sort of, this is mostly an organizational orientation um, to CIP, and the first thing we should probably do is pick a chair. Um, I don't think being chair of this committee the very heavy lift, just really organizing um, the schedule. Um, and as I as I recall, the the ex officio member probably shouldn't be the chair. So, is anyone interested in being the chair? <laughs> I'll shoot you out. No, I, I mean I don't care. I mean, I'll... Yeah, it's. Kevin, have you done this before? I, I've not sat on the board many years. I'm just, I'm, I'm not a leader. <laughs> no, but you've been on the Senate been before. Yeah, I, I, know, I, what do you think, Miles? I'm, I'm happy to help whatever you want. I just, I yeah, don't want to Like calls. I said, it's really, I I not that it's in name only, but. Yeah. Um, uh, There's something else to add to my report. <laughs> yes. And, and I'm trying to build that up now as I get older. And the office is here to help you with whatever yeah. kind of administrative lift goes along. Um. So. Why don't we review the materials that we have in front of us? The black and white version is the 2020 approved. 2021. Uh, 2021. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Hi. Are you joining us from school? I am. Oh, Come okay. on in. All right. Um, let me make you a copy of these materials so that you know. I have it on my laptop. Okay. If that's okay. Well, you, you, you may have it's, one, it's but you don't easier have the other. All right. And, and actually, <clears throat> we should probably do some introductions because I don't know if anyone, everyone knows everyone else. Um, I'll wait until Caroline's back. It's feeling soupy in here. Please, please no help. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the air is on. Um, you know, that's my. That's my hot button. I gotta have cool air. Do you guys want me to wear a mask or not? So um, you you might want to. Um, the the board eliminated the mask mandate oh, a one. couple of months ago, but Does we agreed like to I'm follow the CDC right? guidelines. And uh, uh, unbeknownst to me, and Carolyn, do you know if you have any extras? There's yeah, yeah, there's, there's, there's a table. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I thought it was in. I didn't think this area was in no. that. Um, yeah. My last. It was a substantial risk as far as. What the CCC is high. Yeah, it's Stratford County. Oh, it's Stratford County. Stratford it's Stratford County. County. What? Yeah. Okay. It's substantial. It's not high. It's, it's, it's substantial. So it's still something to. Uh, So I thought we'd just do a quick round of introductions. I am Miles England, I'm the ex officio member from the select board. Um, been on this committee for several years. Um, so, yes. Kevin Haynes from planning, I've been on this board for several years as well. Um, I'm Erin Kavanaugh from the school board. I'm new to this. Um, I'm currently the chair, uh, which is why I'm here tonight, but I'm hoping at our August meeting that we're going to appoint another member okay. um, to be on the board. Uh, or it might, it might still be me, but it might be someone else. Okay. Uh, Joe Dash, I'm the representative from the Budget Committee. First time out. Mike, you kind of knew to all this. Great. And we all know who. Caroline, <laughs> 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 I'm the administrator. 
Um, so we were just getting started, Aaron. Um, the black and white version of this is the approved 2021. I forget what year we were in. Um, <laughs> so, like so that's on the website, the, but if you want the me to print it for most you, current year I will. Months. I also emailed them to you, but if you, because you said you had your laptop, but this, this color version is new, but if you want me to print um, the black and white 2021, I certainly will. I'm not sure it's... I mean, this is what got uh, sort of approved by the right. board. Right, like mostly I think our conversation will be around the color version. Okay. Yep. Um, so the spreadsheets have got a lot going on. Um, so I think we can kind of just walk through. So in the, so it's broken up by sort of overall departments. Um, and to, to back up anything that's on this list, that there's a ten thousand dollar threshold. Is that yes. true? So it has to be like a, a big enough item to. It's not you know reams of paper or a copier right, right. even. Uh, some durable good that's going to last uh, a while and cost over ten thousand dollars. And that too, is that ten thousand over the life of what you're budgeting or one year like impact or one like when we go <coughs> to buy it, it would be okay. over ten thousand dollars. We do have some items on here the. On the color version, the ones that have the that are in the peach are equipment. So we established an equipment fund um, this year. This year? Well, it was, it, it was established, but we started funding. Uh, right. Okay. Yep. You're right. Um, and, and adding things to the list that um, may not qualify as capital. Like, for example, we got into a pickle with fire radios that. Um, Equipment, um, the Department of Revenue didn't really see that as capital, even though collectively we were buying tens of thousand dollars worth of them. So just to help us keep track of those items that are still collectively expensive, but not technically capital necessarily. Um, so we have, we've through, over the years tried to figure out all of the things we're going to need, and this probably isn't everything. But I think it's a it's a fairly fairly good list, um, and what the cost will be, or what the cost of the thing is, which is a moving target, um, and then the year that we think we want to purchase it, um, and then so like a savings account every year we try to put some money toward. So when we go in 2025 to replace the AC compressors, we've got close to $144,000 um, and like that. And the year of purchase is what will often get adjusted and updated. Correct. At, when each department head comes yeah. in, they'll say, you know, anticipated this last in four years, it's not going to make it. Yep. Um, so a lot of things are already on here. There may be new items as well, but a lot of times you'll see the, the purchase year move forward. Yep. Um, and especially we have to do a lot of juggling around to, to make the thing balance. So I think this year we put in $200,000. Right. Um, and I see that we have 76856 to sort of allocate among. I have to verify that. Okay. The spreadsheet created that. Oh, um, okay. It was so, three, yeah, so, but I expect there is. But I, there's you know, so unallocated money. Right, because right, we, we put $200,000 in, but then of course we spent a bunch of money in the items that we are authorized to purchase. So I need to verify that. Okay. That's what the did. Okay. Um, so the, the way that we've, uh, and I'm, yeah, okay, I'll just continue. Um, the, the, the way we've done this in the past is we have department heads come in, and, um, they'll say, okay, this coming year I, I want so fire is a good example they want okay want is a <laughs> they've identified a need um, so vehicle exhaust system which they don't have one uh, and a vehicle wash area which is being mandated by EPA um, and probably just a good idea but um, so those are the things that and, and these were new last year I believe, I don't think they were yeah. on the list until uh, last year, so there's not everything um, sort of put away for these items. Um, so we can choose to allocate, the, put money in the 
toward those that, that's unallocated right now. Um, but then they, you know, the fire chief might show up and say, I also need new whatever, a saw for the truck. I don't know. He'll, he'll come up with something. Um, <laughs> Can I just ask them? Sure. So take the vehicle exhaust, 60,000 gross. But then as you go across, it only shows the, the peach for 2022. I, I guess I missed. Um, so that's because it only got kind of identified last year. Okay. And um, so in 2022, what does the 20,000 represent? So, so the green squares are the purchase year. Mm. So it should match with whatever the purchase target year is um, to the left of that in that column. But if you go way over to the right, there's um, a column in CIP reserve funds. So when you look at the vehicle exhaust system, um, as it's presented here, we're going to purchase that in 2022 uh, for $60,000. Or $20,000 of the amount that's going into the CIP fund. Like, like in other words, we're, we're paying $20,000 from the amount that we're putting into the fund and taking it out in the same year while we already have $30,000 put away for it. Um, but you see in this other column, future years slash other sources, there's $10,000 um, that we still need to come up with. Mm -hmm. um, so we either need to change that twenty to 30000 if we're going to buy it this year, or we have to take money away from some other project to fund that if we're really going to fund that in 2022. So that's what this spreadsheet represents the way it is now. But, but I just want to say that I... Um, I spent all afternoon with this spreadsheet, and, and you'll see that it's um, incomplete in, in some ways, but what it has is everything from the gray approved version. The years are correct, the amounts have been updated, and the payments reflect over the 10-year period what's in that spreadsheet. But some of the columns to the right, those totals, um, have not been updated, and the totals in the bottom have not been updated. So one of the things that we would want to keep an eye on as we're wrapping up this process is these totals on the bottom for the CIP reserve fund. So there's also the equipment reserve fund, which is supposed to be those items marked in peach. Um, right now they're included in the CIP fund in this total in this spreadsheet, and, and I need to separate that out. Um, but these amounts in each year the goal would be for those to be, A, pretty level, or going up steadily and slowly, while also, B, ultimately fully funding everything, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of the ultimate challenge in, in the process. So we need to keep that in mind when we're thinking about how we might fund these things. Do we want to put more money away now, or do we want to put money evenly over time, or heavier over here and less over here for certain years just to balance it out. Yeah. But you can also see if you look at the, at the black and white one, if you look at the fire department at the bottom, you'll see for vehicle exhaust system 30,000 was funded in 2021. Do you see? Um, and that does reflect on the, on the colored one where it says in the, in yeah. the reserve fund currently you see that same 30,000. That was 30000 that was put away in 2021, anticipating, if you're looking at the black and white, 2022 was the purchase year. So you can see that that 30000 did carry over, and you can see it. So if you look down this future years column, that's basically, I'll call it a shortfall. That's kind of like... Yeah, like take for example, yeah. in the fire department, replacing fire engine one, the SMEAL 1991, um, that's a $600,000 purchase, and we're not putting any money away for it, so we're $600,000 shy for that. Mm -hmm. In other words, um, so far the select board's planning to bond that when the time comes, right. just because the payments to put away for that would be exorbitant. So um, the goal is to not make the annual payments into the fund so unattractive that people don't vote for the whole idea of the plan. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's something that we can bond. So, right. So you'll you'll bond that, and then 
that payment would show up in the operating budget then? Yes. yes. And then it would come off of here once it's been modeled? Well, it would go to the bottom of the list for future replacement, not necessarily funded right away, yes. but, but I, I would hope the goal would be that we would start funding it sooner rather than later so that ultimately, you know, after a good long time, we'll be ready to pay cash for it. You're not buying it. But yeah. we would be able to anticipate the life of the newly purchased right. one, and the end of that lifespan would be the target purchase date for the new replacement. Right. But at least you can see it coming and following yep. here. Right. So, for example, in the highway department, on the bottom, we have the 2021 articulating loader replacement. So that's something that got approved for purchase this year. I put the same amount as was approved this year. Um, and it doesn't really have a year, and nor any allocations. Um, so when the department head comes in, we can verify that in 15 or 25 years or whenever it is that that might get replaced, what would be a reasonable amount of money to expect? And then we can start to think about when we want to start getting money. And we want to keep it as a placeholder. And obviously the further out it, the new purchase year would be, it, it's more years to divide out the, the, uh, right. the payment into it. You know, so, I mean, so that hopefully this is pretty level once we get everything fully funded, that it should stay really level. But like Kevin's saying, we want to make sure not to lose track of our pieces of equipment to make sure that we remember that they need to get replaced someday. I don't know, is this part of, um, maybe I'm trying to catch up here, so can I uh, select? So something like the articulated motor. I mean, the town has tons of assets that have a long-term life to them. And not all of them are listed. You know, the dump truck yeah. as an example. You know, is there a difference in what this should there should there be a subcategory somewhere that just talks about asset replacement, or should we would you know we listed the articulating loader, right? It was a water model, I think actually. Yes. But I mean we have tons of stuff in the That's town. where we rely on the, the department heads yeah. to focus on that. Maybe their plan is that you know when the time comes and X dump truck dies. Maybe it won't be replaced, so something else will incorporate that, you know, service but, or whatever. But really, there is no other plan. Like, if you look at the highway department, again, there's the Bobcat skid loader, yep. which zero dollars will not re be replaced. And it just, this is how we keep track of the idea that it exists. Mm -hmm. At least so far, nobody wants to replace it. But it may be that two years from now, maybe there's a different road agent or a different select board and they decide that we do need to replace it and fund it and then it'll get a year and be back on the plan. So that there is no other method of keeping track of our capital assets. So we hope that all of our vehicles are on this list. Right. I mean, I'm just thinking of the transfer station. I don't know what things cost there. But right. you got the, you got the, the compactor for the car, for the car board. And yep. Yeah, tons of stuff that are running all over the place. I mean, to me, we actually try to understand the difference. We do have those. Okay. Yeah, under your transfer Okay. So, so I, I think I understand what you're what you're saying. This this can't be an, an exhaustive list of of everything we have, and I doubt it is. Mm -hmm. But we think we've captured like all the big stuff. Oh, like yes. 80, right. We're hoping for it to become. Yes. Comprehensive. It's been in existence since, since 2014, mm -hmm. and every year something new and pretty significant okay. gets added because people don't remember, oh yeah, that we need something we've never had before, or just, you know, the department heads aren't used to thinking in this way, no. so, so inevitably every year still provides new things. But the goal is for this to be comprehensive for any capital items over $10,000 or any equipment that comprehensively would be over a ten thousand dollar purchase. So I mean it just seems like we're mixing this is the plan for how we fund stuff with our asset list. Yes, and we are. Which, which is not necessarily a great thing, but it's kind of a recognition of we don't have a plan. So let's at least try right. to so have at least a plan. in here everything that people, the department heads all feel like the police crews, we know those are coming up early. So those are early. Stuff up. okay, I understand. So it is kind of a it'll, there'll be things in here that people look and say that's pretty interesting, but why aren't you funding it? And it's because it's really part of just we want to keep track of it because we might have to at some point. So the thing that will cause somebody going from keeping track to needing to fund it is going to be a department head coming in and saying, I need the uh, skid skin. Um, 
but that might be something that's going to say, I need it now. Well, we should have thought about funding it for the past five years. Kind of so this is part of this group's job. The department heads will come in with their needs, and they're also going to, we hope, verify these amounts and verify these years. Okay. Um, because sometimes things last longer and they're doing well and sometimes not. Mm -hmm. um, we, we then need to, you know, budget committee, planning board, need to keep the bigger picture in mind with, um, with what, what is present going on in the operating budget. Is it reasonable to ask the voters for all these things this year? Or do we really need to say this is too much for this year? Like one of these things has to wait until next year. What is the school planning? And is it too much to ask for all of this when the school is doing this major project the same year. Mm -hmm. So um, just because they're bringing it to our attention, it should definitely go on the plan if it's not already. But this is why we review things right. and, and why this group works on the numbers, the allocations, and the years. But then in the end, this group makes a recommendation to the select board that in their own view of the big picture, might come to a different conclusion about what's put on the ballot. So we've seen, we've seen where a department head will come in and say, you know, I, I planned this for 2022, but I can get another year out of that. So something that was 2024, I kind of need that now. And we're always, you know, we're always under the burden of some state regulations changing where, you know, you have to have this type of radio, you have to have body cams on every offer, officer. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, things like that are just requirements that, that may pop up at any time. So this is just a, a worksheet that gives us the CD. Overview and it's, I mean, like I said, there's a lot going on on this spreadsheet. Like, it's a savings account, it's a spending account, it's an asset list. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But, um, what, what else am I missing about, about this? Um, so, it looks like we have in CIP right now 361000 Three hundred and eight dollars, and I know you said you need to verify I, that, I but it must be. It, it's something like that. I have to go through the um, the trustees' report for okay. what they have for a balance, and that will help me determine whether I agree with the seventy six eight fifty six that the spreadsheet okay. came up with, and 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 then we can also discuss how that should be allocated. Yep. But it should be approximate. Did, did Quonset Huts make it to the ballot, or did, did we say we weren't? Um, so that's the only item from 2021 that I left on this colored version, because they didn't get Quonset Huts, but they did get a storage container with a grant. Oh, okay, and, right. and I'm not sure if they're going to decide that that meets their needs, or if they still need Quonset okay. Huts. So that's a question when, when yes. they come to visit. Okay. Um, so the other the other piece of business um, we need to think about for tonight is our schedule, um, and as always, it's tight. Um, so we're scheduled to go before the budget committee with this the end ish of September, mid September. Which means that the this group has to have a recommendation to the select board, and the select board has to have made a determination about those things. That's the date that should be submitted to the site. It, it's always just kind of as soon as possible. The more time we give them, the more time they have to deliberate over this. And then if they need more time, they can ask the budget committee to rearrange other departments that may be ready or something. Um, it's always challenging to be ready. So it really has to do with the schedule of you all. And just so you guys know, we generally will do like two park heads on an evening. We won't have four in that one night. Yeah. We won't have we won't be coming here for just higher than back to police than black. You know, it depends on the, the volume of what we anticipate coming from these people. And we still don't really have a spokesperson for this building, do we? I mean a, a general maintenance you know facilities manager. I know that was something you was talking about, but it's still kinda it's everybody a, that everybody. that position is not filled. It's yeah. not clear what's gonna happen with that. So no, not exactly. So, so that's what it would be. It would be a couple of department heads on a night. So it's not it's not hours, but it's not coming in for one hour. Yeah, and and they've been made aware that 
um, they need to to get their materials together um, to meet with us. Um, so I don't know if we want to like try to set some dates. I'm um, flexible as long as it's yeah. evenings. Okay. You know, any any weekday as long as it's no earlier than five thirty, I can pretty much move everything around. So. It just has to take conflict with other corresponding meetings that people have. That's right. tough. I, I, I got it. Oh, okay. Are, are Thursdays good for people? As long as there's not a ZBA in the day. Okay. The school board meets the second Thursday of each month, so that's. That's. Not good. Okay. But other um, Thursdays are fine. So let's, let's try this a different way. What is available? <laughs> um, Wednesday next week is available, um, Thursdays, um, the, the school board. Tuesday night next week is actually available, but it's also about, you know, you got to give the department heads up a little bit of a yeah. heads up that this is coming, though they do also know. Um, the response has gotten so much better. They're going it, to it has, come in they're and print up this, and we're basically going to look at what they're saying and plug it in. It's, it's yes. fairly well organized, you'll mm -hmm. see. Um, they do this every year. This is their wish list. I mean, this is when they get what they need. You know, um, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the following week, 17, 18, and 19 are all free. Okay. No, no. This week, uh, next month. The following. That would give department a time. Yeah. Right? That, um, and maybe maybe we can do a couple of nights I that, that, that we can know that's a lot to fresh. ask. But, um, Tuesday. I don't have any any restrictions. But so we're talking seventeenth and eighteenth. For me, that week, seventeenth, eighteenth, and nineteenth. Any of those evenings? Okay. Yeah. Any Okay. If it is too unrealistic to do within a week like that, is that going to compromise family home? Or um, my wife is encouraged. <laughs> Sometimes meetings are good for marriage. <laughs> um, well, why don't, we, why don't we say Tuesday, Thursday, 17th? Would you guys want to double check and just put it out on the, on the email? And we, yeah, we need to make sure department heads. You want to double check or not? I, I will um, let you know if anybody has a conflict. Do we want to um, suggest who goes which night, like how do we want to combine these? We've got police, fire, highway, transfer yeah. station, and I would open it up to other departments, though typically other departments don't have capital needs. Right. Um, well, we don't transfer usually a lot of big you know, but, but highways usually have more involved. The police so are more involved, and fire is kind of more involved. So do we want to do police and fire on one night and the highway transfer on the other night? Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. I mean, from what we know, I mean, this, this thankfully should be a, a later um, CAP year, um, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, do you know if the school is proposing any larger projects? We are not sure yet, um, but the ventilation system is on our radar, okay. and the boilers on the radar and so we are trying to decide if this is the year um, we're also trying to find out if we even could get the work done if, if the other warrant passed um, hiring contractors and things is pretty tricky right now um, so that was something that was a goal for us was to update our capital sort of decide when when this is going to happen. Um, so we're definitely looking for feedback from the town. And is there estimates being generated in the work? Is it has it has a survey of the projects been done currently? What's the status of it? Um, we had a survey done last year, and they came to us with um, a few different options. On ventilation? Yes. And we, we were looking at that time to do the boilers and the ventilation all at once, just, just kind of see what it would be. And there were different options, but it's, I, I, I can't remember exactly um, what they were. I will find out that information, but I, 
these for more than one year. So you, but you, so you have a benchmark baseline of, of what kind of we're talking about, although it's dated. It's dated, and we got sort of one proposal, so we're looking to get some additional information um, and, and narrow that down. But you know, last year uh, with COVID, and we were trying to spend as little as possible, but we're also trying to balance that with the, the life of the boilers and the fact that the, um, you know, the ventilation is really important. So that's the only kind of big ticket on that. Ventilation, um, especially in um, public, high traffic public buildings, um, can, at least as far as the town is concerned, qualify for um, the American Rescue Plan funding. And so I'm wondering if, um, I don't know what the structure is of funding going towards schools, and if you know whether or not like there is COVID or rescue plan funding that cover ventilation. That's what we're trying to find out. Um, it's complicated and we haven't gotten kind of a clear answer on that. Yeah, I'm um, not surprised. But that's just, I mean, that's the hope, right? <laughs> that we at least get some or a lot of that covered. Um, Rollinsford, being a small school, hasn't gotten a ton of that funding um, for, you know, that has gone to some other communities. Um, but we're definitely hoping that that, that would be the case. Do, do you have any sense of whether this might be a bond, or are you going to use like your capital maintenance fund and drain that all out and then just do cash for the rest? Or We haven't made that decision. Um, that's kind of what we are weighing and trying to decide. It would probably make sense to use some of our capital reserve and then you know, do on for the rest. But that's kind of what we're, what we're getting on for now. But obviously, grants would come into play on that as well. So there's a lot of unknowns currently. Right. Is there a ventilation system no. in place? No. no. Okay. There's so this is, does that mean like air conditioning or no, just air movement? Movement, yeah. yeah. A million bucks for that. I don't quote me on that. Yeah, no. It's, it's been it's a long time since we discussed it. But remember it was high. It was a big number. It was a big number. It was $400,000 the last time you had a quote, and that didn't include the boilers. I think that maybe is, is what it was. Okay. Um, I, I need to get the numbers and the numbers are straight in my head. It, it wouldn't surprise me. I, I mean, I'm surprised because everything costs more than yeah. Well, it's more yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I mean, labors. I mean, you're going to have a real expense of cost. Not just replacing the unit, but using the existing ducting. I mean, there is a ducting. Right. Right. And it's an old building, and you, yeah. you know, you punch into walls and have to get above ceilings and you know, put yeah, put nice. circulation where there wasn't circulation. Right. So labor's crazy. There are different scenarios that we were looking at. Um, you know, do we just do the boilers because we know that those are? I think they've already aged out and they're kind of losing along. Or do we say, you know, let's go for it and, and really do what we need to do? So um, that's what we're figuring out sort of the next couple of meetings, what the, what the plan for is going to be. Has there been any discussion of, of replacing one of the boilers, breaking up over a few years and having a primary boiler and then an older secondary boiler just uh, to sort of spread out the cost? I don't think so, but. Um, because there's, there's two of them right side by side, so there's always a ready to have that, right? Yes. As far as I know. On a um, related note, kind of in the weeds, um, I understand that your facilities director retired. Um, I'm wondering if you are hiring now for a new one. Is that going to be replaced for the fall? Um, and the reason I, I ask is because the town is evaluating. Um, you know, they funded that position for a partial year, and is there a way to cost share? That position. We've talked about it a couple of years ago, but is there a way to maybe, um, you know, have ten percent, you know, five percent or ten percent of that position maybe? Yeah. So um, we have backfilled that position using um, our our new custodian who had been there for the last year and sort of learning the ropes. So he's now um, doing kind of the same role that Dick Fortier did, which was 
part-time facilities manager or part-time custodian. Um, so I think we can definitely talk about that. Um, that that's that's you know the select board hasn't decided what way they're going, but it would be good to know sure. if that were an option that they could evaluate that. In the town, in the town, I'll say it's the cost of the right. of this individual, but that individual also assume responsibility of the town building to understand all that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm on the school, I have a question. Um, how does what does the process work with? Okay, you have all of this stuff that's town related. And you're talking about some school related capital improvements. Um, how do they get meshed together? And then the budget committee, and I guess it's really the budget committee, because the social board's yeah. only dealing with the town, come right. in and say, this is too much. You got to move, you got to make some different decisions here. I mean, do they follow the same format? Or? They have their own plan, but this is why we have a representative from the, school, okay. from the school board and the budget committee on this group, is so that you can go back to your groups and say, the school's planning this major project, maybe we should do you know, less this yeah. year, and, and that you can bring back to the budget committee, you know, I think that you know we're hitting a major wave with these two at the same time, and or, or just know that you know one or the other put off a major project right. in order to accommodate um, right. The other, so that we can try to be sensitive to the tax. But they can't. I mean, can we all follow the same format? So just like there's a highway department, there's a school board section, and you all add up. Well, we can yeah. try. The problem is that this document is the final version of this document is approved by the select board, and the CIP is owned by the planning board with the budget committee. So okay. so we don't have any authority to say to the school board, you need to participate in this, or please update this, right. or you know, we need to know by next Thursday that this is correct, or any of those things. But the budget committee does, and then they are going to be dealing with two different formats of trying to well, you, you have the authority to ask for the information. I don't think you can tell the school okay. to use this form. Right. But the representatives also bring to this board yeah. information, like you just said, about the boiler in ventilation. We need to kind of know that just to see what's coming up as a town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was my So it's, it's both sides. You bring information back to, to your people, but also telling us what's going on, too. Right, right. Yep. Um, anything else for tonight? Like so I guess my only other thought would be, does this group want to impart anything upon the department heads with regard to expectations as they prepare to present to you? So for sure they would verify year target years of purchase and amounts for these items. Yep. But you know, some communities have a form. We never got as far as filling out a form for each of the items that you want to have on this list or, or anything like that. But um, any kind of narrative or any kind of explanation or documentation in advance or, you know, like how do you want to see information from them? I think that's a great idea because each year we basically got just a word document, you know, the information, no format. And again, I don't want to spring this on them a week before they have to find the information. But I think that would be very helpful. Um, you know, it's always going to be, you know, anything that's changing as far as purchase year, anything that we haven't seen yet that's that's coming up, or anything that we haven't seen yet that's a now thing. You know, that we have to add on fairly quickly. Um, but we also ask if there's anything that can be pushed out further, or anything that's been determined that it's not really necessary this year before going as it was last year. They, they know to communicate that information to us. So my thought is that I would share this colored sheet with them while also letting them know that it's um, not completely um, in working order as we would hope a final version to be, but for them, so that they have a reference with what is already um, the purchase price and year for the items that are included so that they can um, consider whether there are things that are not included or that the amounts are different so that they can know what, what we all are referencing and then um, have them, um, you know, just, just check boxes for them or, or a few, you know, 
check your years, check your purchase prices. Um, I don't mean even send them the, the black and white tool, just say this is what, what you presented yeah, last yeah. year. So, you know, and, and you know how this went, you know where this went, or you know what, what, how that flowed. So both of them, so they can be. Yeah. I, and I, and I'll be honest with you, I like, I like the format, you know, the worksheet format that you were saying. Uh, uh, I think that's great. I, I like that. I like it, that. You know, something, I'll, I'll see if I can find one, but something that helps Simple people think of things that they're not thinking about. Right. So like how long, how long will this thing last? What's, right. what's yeah. the anticipated maintenance? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's definitely good. Well, that's a really important point. Thank you for saying that. What is the op what is the is there yeah. and what is the associated the operating cost of... for this item? Because, for example, body cameras is going to require an extraordinary amount of data storage. Um, and we're going to either pay for that yearly or it's another separate capital expense or, or something. Right. So Associated they, costs. Really right. Costs. Like, and every, of course, every vehicle has maintenance. But I'm, I'm sure a lot of those things um, have associated um, operation costs, um, which will help them. If you yeah. flag right. that for them, then they can. On these big major ticket purchases like vehicles, they, they should be able to predict if there's a, if there's a major three-year service or a major five-year service. You know, is there is there a, is there a, a manufacturer suggested service point? Because um, those are usually pretty big overhauls. Well, know? and also like, um, do we, you know, do we buy the tires every year, every two years? Like, you know, I think you can get kind of into the weeds with that in a good way that can help inform. So, so that's kind of separate um, because you're really getting into the weeds Operating of the operating costs, budget, yeah. whereas this is. Capital. But it might help decide to choose one piece of equipment over another. Yes, but I think it's also important because it, it helps them figure out how to budget their associated operating yeah, not costs. Cost. It is. So it's important to recognize that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we're giving them enough time to figure out, you know. Well, this would be a question that we pulled about in front of us is, you know, is set the precedent for going to maybe next year. Uh, uh, you know, even since you said 2014 is when this vice came in. I mean, this has come a long way in uh, six, seven years. I mean, it's, 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 it, was, it was just kind of, it was tough in the beginning. Oh, uh, Just wrapping your mind around it, you know, yeah. and, and for them to as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and what this does demonstrate is we have, what's the total of, Sort of expected 4.3 million. Is that am I reading that right? That that is the total, total. value of everything on. And we have 360 a year per safe. Safe. So. So. <laughs> Right. So in theory, if the, you know if this is a 10-year plan and you have 4.3 million dollars worth of equipment, you're putting away 430 thousand dollars a year. Yeah. We're not even doing half that yet. But but then back away from that and remember that we're not funding everything yet because some things last for more than 10 years, so we're not going to fund them until later right. in the plan. But, but still, that is, as far as an order of magnitude, um, we are highly underfunding this. But, like you said, it's going to be something that's presentable. I mean, it's, going to, it's going to be a, a, a plan you can swallow as a taxpayer. I mean, and the flip side is just that, you know, fire engines cost, you know, half a million dollars. You know, they're very, very expensive equipment, you know. Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so do you think that you'd be able to communicate with the um, I will communicate heads with department and heads, and I'll create or find some kind of worksheet that can help them think through some of these things. Um, and you've heard how availability as far as next week and plugging in a couple of things. So we'll do, I think we decided Tuesday and Thursday, 6.30, and if for whatever reason the department head can't make one or the other, um, I might move the departments around so that they sit differently yeah. on those yeah. two days, or I'll let you know if we have to do Wednesday instead of Thursday or something. And for that, that's when Tuesday, Thursday, the 17th and 19th. Correct. Yep. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yep. All right. If there's nothing else, um, I think we can call it a night. I appreciate everyone coming in.